Now, it's been a big year for champion jockey James McDonald, engaged a new baby and the title of world's best jockey. I caught up with the star hoop ahead of last week's Lightning to see how he's adjusting to life as a dad and what's on his radar this autumn. Yeah. Well, James, welcome to Racing Dreams. Lovely to see you and thanks for having us in your beautiful home. Speaking of home, life's looking a bit different for you these days. How's life as a dad? Yeah, not going really well, obviously. Caitlin's controlling most of it with Evie, but um, we've got a pretty busy time, so it doesn't seem to stop. But um, it's good to come home half of the races and see a smiling baby. And she's getting to an age where now she's moving a lot more and smiling at you. And I, I think when I go and grab her, sometimes at um, maybe 6, 6.30, that, that's the best time because she's just having a good old stretch <laughs> and life's so, so good for her, you know. I feel like it must be pretty good for you at the moment, professionally as well. I mean, world's best jockey. It's something we we're really proud of, obviously, to have a look at the... It's only going, been going a short time, I think five, six, seven years, and to join the list of jockeys that's already are there before me and probably the ones that are coming after us as well, it's, it's a who's who of the list. Probably what caught my attention more is what it's opened um, yeah. in terms of overseas exposure. I think um, it's definitely helped in a, in a lot of ways in, in getting international rides and, um, and maybe being the first border call anyway. In terms of international rides, obviously you had the success in Hong Kong mm. as well. Is there any, any inkling, any part of you that <laughs> wants to head overseas and ride? Um, well, not at, not at particular moment anyway. I think we're pretty lucky here in Sydney. The racing's going so strong. The horses that we're riding are, are phenomenal and we're getting a little bit of luck as well. So there's no reason to pick up and move away at this point in time. I'd love to get back to Ascot this year and if we can, find the right horse to take me over there. I hear a whisper Animos might be heading over so we hopefully chuck our name in the hat for him if he does venture over there. Obviously it's one thing to have the great rides but in terms of your consistency it ha you have been so consistent. Is there anything that you're putting that down to? Yeah it's a really good question and um, it's something you don't really think of. You just go out there apply your trade the best you can hope for a little bit of luck as well but I think as I've got older, as any sportsman, I suppose, it's the old cliche, they, they work smarter, not harder. And consistency is obviously a great thing because if you're not riding winners on a Wednesday or a Thursday at Kembla or Gosford, you're not going into a Saturday full of confidence. Confidence is a wonderful thing for a jockey and it's a snowball effect. And if you're riding really well during the midweeks, um, it will snowball into a Saturday and that's where the pressure rides become and um, if you're going there high flying, well it's hard to, hard to beat you. We're coming into the autumn carnival of course and your association with some of those names you've mentioned continues, the likes of Animo, mm. but how's your mate Nature Stroop? How's he going? <laughs> Eight years of age now, you two have got this incredible bond. Yeah we do. I think he's only got a light sort of autumn ahead with maybe three runs culminating in the TJ Smith so it's not a taxing campaign for him so he should be up for it and even though he's probably a horse that can't get better he has to maintain that and even if he does come off a little bit which he's entitled to it's still probably good enough to be competing against these sort of horses even though there's a lot of up-and-comers coming through nipping at his heels he's still going to be the one to beat isn't he? He's such a quirky character too and it's just been such a privilege and joy to watch the two of you over the years because it's almost like you've grown together and you've achieved the heights together. Yeah it's been a love-hate relationship, <laughs> put, it, put it that way. Like I was just reading a stat not long ago that he's had 35 starts, he's won 20 of them but he's been beaten 12 times at two dollars or less so you can see why people love to hate him yeah. I suppose but he's just been a phenomenal horse to us and for what what we thought he would ever achieve it's just blowing our minds so arguably the best well he is the best sprinter in the world over the last 12 months he's the reigning champ so let's hope he can come and do it again and he's going for a, a fourth TJ Smith which whew, if he can achieve that that's in uh, I wouldn't compare the two of them but four cox plates winks <laughs> for TJs, we won't get ahead of ourselves, but he's aiming to be in the elite status, isn't he?
Oh, he certainly is. And it was so lovely to, to sit down with James and meet his new little bub, Evie, and see him and Kate at home. Of course, he rides the favourite animo in the Chipping Norton today and Blanc de Blanc uh, for a spot in the slipper. We will have part two of that interview with James next week. Oh, he's an absolute champion, isn't he now?